Well, good morning. Uh, welcome to our uh, press availability this morning. I uh, just wanted to recognize today is uh, March 29th, which is uh, Vietnam Veterans Day. I want to say once again, welcome home to uh, the Vietnam vets that served uh, over uh, in Vietnam. Uh, more than 8.7 million Americans served. More than 58,000 Americans died. 1,600 are still missing and unaccounted for. We have about 7 million veterans that are still alive today, so I just wanted them to know that we appreciate their service and um, acknowledge today's Vietnam Veterans Day. And again, a heartfelt thank you for your service to you and your families. Uh, we're, I think, at day 73 of uh, the legislative session. We're working hard on uh, the budget on the floor, although a lot of work hasn't been done in the last couple of days. Um, we do have ideas. I just wanted to point out that the House uh, Republicans came uh, ready to uh, have input on the budget. There's a stack of amendments that we offered on the House floor. There's a stack of amendments that we offered in House Finance. And uh, to date, only three of our amendments were included, which was merely intent language. Mm -hmm. So. Um, for us right now, the budget um, is uh, too large for our members to vote for. Uh, it doesn't take into account our ideas or the things that we've been talking about. So we're here to answer your questions about that. And I have um, former Speaker Mike Chenault with me today, who's been through this process more times than he, probably, he would probably like to admit on what it takes to get to the end game and to get the budget across the line over to the other body. Hi, and good morning. Uh, you know, I guess this press conference can go a number of different ways. I, I just want uh, the people of Alaska to know that the House Republicans are here to try to get a budget done, a budget that they're asking for, which is smaller than not only what the governor has proposed, but certainly uh, smaller than where we're at today. I think we're about 100 and the last number I heard was about $188 million more than what the governor proposed is what is currently in this budget. As Cherise said earlier, we have uh, made numerous attempts to reduce the size of that budget, uh, and we have been met with uh, basically uh, uh, along the caucus line, vote no on, on amendments that uh, we've proposed on the floor. Uh, a number of those <coughs> amendments have been either uh, voted down or they have been tabled or they have not allowed us to introduce them. And so uh, as we go through the process, it's no wonder that we're where we are at today. Uh, there's, nothing in the, uh, there's nothing in the budget that the House uh, Republican minority can uh, coalesce around in order to get uh, the required votes to pass this budget. And uh, it's the majority's budget and the majority ha is the majority because they have more than 21 votes. And so in order to get our support for the budget, I believe that uh, they're going to have to come and talk with us. And we have started those conversations here in the last few days. Mm -hmm. They haven't been going on the whole budget cycle, but certainly the last few days. And I think that we'll get there, but, uh, you know, there's going to have to be some compromise and that's what it's going to take in order to be able to get a, a budget that we can that we can support to pass over to the other side uh, to finish this process. So, with that, uh, Miss Majority or Minority Leader, I'll uh, I'll stand quiet and listen for questions. All right, thanks. Um, if you have a question, just Mal Mallory will hand you the mic to say your name and affiliation. Uh, James Brooks from the Juno Empire. You had mentioned that talks had kind of started up in the last couple of days. Can you talk about like what's been happening behind the scenes, what's um, going on in terms of those talks? So far, not a lot has happened. We've had uh, a meeting. We're hoping to have more meetings today. I thought we might have some yesterday, but uh, that didn't happen. Uh, you know, we're, we're talking about what our members would like to see the budget reduced to, and uh, I think that... Uh, I, and I can let you talk. I mm -hmm. think that you've given them some information, and yeah. they've taken it back. And I assume that they're talking with their finance people, and 
and members of their caucus on what uh, what reductions they might be able to uh, agree with the minority with. Yeah, and I'm, I'm hopeful. I mean, um, Speaker Edgman and I have a great relationship, and uh, we started talking, I think, on um, Tuesday. It was our first meeting, and um, brought him some ideas. I mean, we have a lot of amendments to choose from. Uh, you know, we don't want to, um, at this point in time, do anything that would harm life, health, and safety. We've always said that, that our budget amendments are very reasonable. Even if we went back to 2017 um, budget numbers, I mean, that would be even a reduction from where we're at today. So uh, we're willing to work with them. We, our members show up every day. We're, we're ready to work. Um, we have each other, Bryce and I have each other's cell phones, and we're available. And, um, you know, Representative Chenault and I would be happy to sit down with them, or our finance members would be happy to sit down with their finance members. So, you know, we're, we want to get this done. We're, we're here, and our only obligation is to pass the budget. And we're ready for that. And this is just step one, by the way. This is just step one of, of getting it over to the other body. So we recognize that. Becky Bohr with the Associated Press. Uh, for Representative Millett, on the, the dividend uh, question, I know, like you said, this is just step one. We don't even have a budget yet. But um, if, for some, if for some reason we end up with uh, a full dividend, which you supported um, on Monday, OMB puts it about twenty six fifty, um, and nothing changes. If you know, we've been having the same conversation in this building now for a number of years, what do we do about the deficit? And we just keep going in circles. So for nowhere further along, how do you, I guess, tell Alaskans next year after you give them potentially a twenty six hundred and fifty dollar dividend? Oh no, we have to go back to a thousand or whatever the case might be because our options are even further diminished. Right, and that's a good question, Becky. And I think that's an important conversation to have. But again, you know, the first step is is trying to agree on a budget that we can send over to the Senate so we can at least start having those conversations. There's a lot of opportunities and options out there um, that would structure the dividend in a in a way that would fit in with the statute. Um, it's no secret I've supported um, and introduced legislation to have a structured draw, a percentage of market value draw. That hasn't happened yet. Um, so those conversations need to continue to happen. But right now, what's in front of us is a budget that, um, you know, 21 million was added into the budget uh, during House finance. Um, so it, it continues to grow and you know the public has spoken that they they don't want a large budget they want us to reduce the footprint of, of size and scope and they want a sensible budget and we've we've come to the table to say look we we listen to Alaskans and here's here's our opportunity to do that and uh, again we are very interested in moving the process along all along we have said that we want to be out of here in 90 days Um, good morning, Matt Hurst with the Anchorage Daily News. Um, did I just forget my question? <laughs> <laughs> too much skiing, too much okay. powder. Okay. Um, your eyes rolling. No, so um, I guess I'm wondering, do you think there's any potential where we would see some of your members vote for a budget that also gets majority votes and some of them not? Or do you, do the two of you hope to see, you know, the 18... 18 members of your caucus all voting together, and is that where you guys sort of stand and stay right now? Yeah, absolutely. We'd love to, we'd love for our caucus to stand strong and and continue on what we've always said. Part of our um, guiding principles was is to reduce the size of government, and you know that's that's you know what we'd like to see happen. But that that's going to take all 18 of our members sitting down, which they've done, and the um, House coalition sitting down with us and taking some of our ideas. And our ideas aren't outlandish. I mean, they're sensible. They're sensible budget cuts. I am so proud of our finance committee. They, they did a really good job of identifying things that could be cut that, um, you know, it, it's, it's hard to look at the budget and, uh, you know, and I hate to bring it up, but, you know, a $500,000 study for vitamin D, we all know in Alaska we're vitamin D deficient. And um, I, I think more studies on vitamin D at a time when, uh, you know, we're having the conversation about do we have enough troopers, do we have enough uh, prosecutors, and, you know, it goes to the point where if they would let us help them craft a budget, we probably, all 18 of us could agree on something like that. Uh, 
All right, Rich Mauer, Channel 2 News. So, Representative Millett, did you listen to the um, to the press conference yesterday by uh, by the House Speaker? I did. He seemed when when Andrew read uh, a quote of yours, he seemed genuinely offended. Did that did that strike you that way, and was that your intent? No, I mean I didn't state anything that wasn't factual. That three of uh, three Republicans caucused with the Democrats because they had a they came together on a fiscal solution and, and a fiscal path forward. And um, I, I didn't say anything that wasn't public, and I didn't say it in a disparaging way. And I didn't. I hope he didn't take it that way. I don't. No, yeah. you know it's you know it's a it's a tense time in the legislature when it comes to budget. These are important decisions that we're making, and um, pointing out the fact that they had coalesced around an idea, and you know we're year two of their organization, and there's growing pains on both sides, uh, being in the majority and being in the minority, and you know we we anticipate some of that tension, but again. You know, we've been around here a long time. We, we understand that we have to come together and we have to compromise. And we're ready and willing to do that. Our members are uh, out talking to the members of their caucus. It's, it's just that time of year. You cited a number, of, a number for the majority's budget over the governor's. Do you have a number that's, that you could give us right now that would be less? I, well, I think anything less. I mean, I don't, you know, you're going to vary de in degrees on what people think that is a real substantial cut and what's not a real cut. But I think we need to have those conversations. You know, our caucus can say definitely that the budget's too high right now. I mean, we're higher than the governor's proposed budget. The, the House coalition's making the governor look like a fiscal conservative right now. And so, um, you know, we would just like to see a, a smaller government and go forward. I'm not right off the top of my head. I don't have a number. I, mean, I don't could, think there is a number, yeah. Rich. I, you know, I'll just be real truthful with you. There's a number of members of our caucus that it might be a lower number that they could support the budget. Uh, there's certainly members of our caucus that uh, think that the higher the number, the better the, the higher the reduction, the better uh, chance that uh, uh, they will gather more support in our caucus. Hey, Steve. Uh, Steve Quinn, KTVA News. So can you talk a little bit more about, you know, we keep hearing about growing government, and some of these additions were money for public defenders because you were bumping up against a constitutional issue. Mm -hmm. um, prosecutors as well. And, uh, you know, the, the Matsu is concerned that uh, there aren't enough troopers right now, um, so there's public safety. That's government. Um, so wh wh where do you kind of draw the line about too much government, growing government. And I think you've seen our members on the floor get up and very eloquently talk about the cuts. Um, there's funds that aren't being used, um, revolving loan funds that aren't being used. There's money that hasn't been utilized in departments. Um, and, and so we, we can see through the budgeting and through, you know, you go back and look at two seven, 2017 actuals and they're higher than that and some of the money wasn't used and we're adding money that departments can't explain why they need more money. So, you know, those are the things we're talking about, and you, you've seen all of our finance members do a very good job, and I can give you the stack of amendments if you'd like to go through them, and um, there's a lot of opportunity in there to reduce, reduce where we're at. Andrew Kitchenman, Alaska Public Radio Network. Uh, Representative Chenault mentioned the uh, $188 million increase, which I believe is the increase um, for the agency operations from last year's budget uh, to this year's budget. Um, compared to the governor's amended budget, it is 